very best way to begin a subject as, uh, as uh, complex as this is uh, from the latest news point. The latest news point has been the, the turbulence over a new decision or an act, the Citizenship Amendment Act, passed by India's parliament. <clears throat> there are some wounds in a nation's life which continue to drip long after the event itself. Uh, the partition of India in the seven decades ago was one such one. One of the difficulties, one of the great difficulties about the partition was what would happen to the minorities of both countries. The Two Prime Ministers first met to discuss this problem on India's side, Jawaharlal Nehru, on Pakistan's side, Liaquat Ali Khan, as early as in 1950. And a reassurances were given that they would do everything to help the minorities in the two sides and resettle them, rehabilitate them. Because there was nothing called a complete demographic partition. There was no complete demographic partition for very good reasons. One that is geographical virtually we had tremendously mixed populations and number two a large number of Indian Muslims including my family simply didn't want to go. The assurances were then repeated in 1955 and so on and so forth but it was the ability of both countries to give citizenship rights to those who sought refuge as a consequence of partition. It was such a right which enabled, for example, our previous Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, who had come to a Sikh, who had come from uh, West Punjab, or what is, what is in today's Pakistan, to become an Indian citizen and indeed rise to the position of Prime Minister of India. This spasmodic uh, rights, debate over rights, and the acquisition of citizenship was a continuing process. The present government decided that there should come a time when a cumulative reality which had been built in was converted into a de facto reality since there were a large number of homes and families and people who had become virtually stateless. This law, therefore, gave rights to those particular people who had crossed the border as a consequence of partition. You must remember that there was never any debate about giving this right. Previous governments had given this right to previous claimants, and indeed, nobody ever thought of this as a controversy. As I said, Dr. Manmohan Singh himself had been one of them. At no point, because of this law, was an Indian Muslim, I repeat, I am an Indian Muslim, ever denied his rights living in India. There was no re reduction in his existing rights as a citizen and as an equal citizen. There was a slight difference, not a slight, sorry, a major difference between the experience of minorities in India and minorities in Pakistan because in India we had a secular, we had a constitution as early as 1950 and the constitution was a secular constitution which gave equality, freedom and equal rights to everybody irrespective of religion. We are all equal in India and indeed if you want to see the equality of India, those of you who have been to India and those who I am uh, going to eagerly suggest that you go to India as soon as possible. <laughs> Very few places better for holiday. Uh, uh, the, one of the things that you should go when you reach Delhi is not just see the avenues and the monuments, but go and see living India. Go to old Delhi. And you may go there at 4 in the morning, go at 4 30 in the morning, and you'll find something marvelous. You'll find that every day, every morning begins with the Azan from the old mosque. And it is followed closely by the bells of the Hanuman temple, followed closely 
by the recitation of the Gurdwara, which is all of them within the vicinity of Chita, and in some days by the peal of church bells from St. Sinai's Church. It's, nobody created it. It is part of the evolutional, civilizational harmony, harmony that has always been the most important part of our country. And therefore, there has never been a question of any person's rights being taken away or diminished or altered in any way, certainly not the 200 uh, million, 200 million Indian Muslims still living there. The, the problems that arose, you must remember that uh, this was put in the manifesto of the party, that this would happen. Not during the whole election campaign, no one from the Congress party or any opposition party ever raised this as an issue. I was sitting in parliament and passing this law. There was hardly virtually any debate on this issue. Much to our regret, uh, after the law had been passed, a certain campaign was carried out, which misled, misled, unfortunately, our uh, Muslim brothers and sisters on this subject. It was part, I am afraid to say, of uh, uh, a campaign of uh, disinformation which uh, succeeded in raising fears. But it is, that is part of democracy. We are a proud democracy. We engage, we talk to our Muslim brothers and sisters, say that their fears are completely unfounded. There has been a touch of, uh, in the recent days, an explosion of uh, two days a day of violence. Uh, which is there in all the newspapers. But those of you who have read about it, may I please tell you that behind the regrettable, unfortunate, all violence, all anger is unacceptable, totally unacceptable. But the manner, manner in which it was calmed down, it was brought into, under control. But I think even in the midst of this misfortune, you saw those of you who have eyes can go and see. Even here we saw marvelous instances of the two communities, Hindus and Muslims, helping each other, giving shelter, giving protection, reaching out to each other, ordering people, reaching out to each other. That is our India. That is the India which we are so proud of. We are not a theocratic nation, unlike a particular neighbor. We don't go into any ism. Our only ism is democracy and equality and the fraternity. But as an as Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi, the father of our nation, so in every respect, uh, we are in the midst of uh, celebrating 150 year, year of his birth. But Gandhiji, what he said remains true, that Hindus and Muslims are one. God has made them one and man cannot drive, or will not drive them apart. That is our philosophy, that is the truth of our India, and I know that very surreptitiously, surreptitiously the chair is uh, slowly moving <laughs> towards me to tell me that he has certainly had enough of my intervention. <laughs> I don't know about you, but uh, I'll leave it for the moment at that. If, uh, any questions later, we shall uh, take them. Thank you.